Hello, my name is Dark Moon Doll, and this is part two of how to make a fabric doll keychain. It's like a snowman, snow woman, slash snow witch, snow shaman, whatever you want to call it. This is part two of how to make that. And I'm using all recycled fabrics. I'm hand embroidering it and hand sewing it. So let me show you um, how far I've come on that one that I showed you that I had been working on already before I started on the one for the tutorial. This one's almost completely done. Let me stop moving around for a little bit. Move my hand out of the way so you can see all of it. This one's completely, almost completely done. See the face there? And the candy canes all around on the hat, on the back of her poncho. <laughs> it's turned into female because look at the hair. I was trying to, on the edge of the hat, it was like really raggedy looking. So I thought I'd trim it with red thread. And instead it turned into like hair. So now it totally looks like, it, to me it totally looks female, but it doesn't have to be. But yeah, it's the snowman, snow woman, witch, shaman doll <laughs> keychain. That would be one hell of a title, huh? But um, all I have to do, see how I attached a, a jump string on top, jump string, a jump ring on top? That's how you're able to attach a keychain on there. So... These are the keychains that I use. I bought a whole bunch of them a long time ago because uh, I wanted to experiment with making keychain uh, charms. So I've been having a ball with that <laughs> because you're working on art that's on a smaller level, a, st a smaller scale. Um, usually my dolls are a lot bigger. And if you've seen my past videos for art, art talk, you'll see that I have bigger cloth dolls that I make. <clears throat> but this one is... Uh, Making these as small is quite a challenge because I got to minimize, miniaturize everything. So yeah, you basically are going to put this keychain on top, and then you have the keychain. You have the keychain dolls. Um, I'll probably take you to the back and come back up here because I left those um, the bag of keychain fabric dolls that I wanted to show you today that I was talking about yesterday on yesterday's show. So if you haven't seen part one yesterday's show, please take check it out. What I'm going to show you today is what how far I've gotten on that one we were working on yesterday. So let me grab it. I think it fell over on the side here or somewhere. I thought I brought it over here. Let's see. Where did you go? I've got the thread. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here it is. All right. Hidden by my caboose, my butt. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, this is my pin cushion. I make pin cushions also. So if you were wondering, and this thread hanging off of there of the pin cushion attached to the pin cushions. I it's a uh, it's a mush it's supposed to be a mushroom, a cyclops mushroom. <laughs> I make I make sewing fun by having the, the tools that I use be fun. So that's part of it. <laughs> So always have a pin cushion available. That way you don't lose needles and nobody steps on a needle and gets pissed off at you. <laughs> or you step on your own needles, which has happened to me many times. <laughs> so this is where we're at right now for this snowman that we we're working on yesterday. Um, I'm trying to hide my nails because I've been working on some messy work. So just ignore my nails. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we've been working on. We worked on yesterday. We got... The whole body done and we got the eyes nose and the mouth done <clears throat> because I'm gonna be putting a um, another parka doing a doll with a parka on I'm not gonna to need to do the details of the body like buttons or whatever if you want to you can do that and put a parka on top but because it's not gonna be seen and the parka is gonna be sewn on to the doll um, all the clothing that I make for my dolls are sewn on to them they're not um, where you can take them off because I feel like my dolls are a work of art and you don't need to remove the clothes on them. That's just how they are. The dolls are like sculptures. So, so I've got my scissors and all I need is the right thread for the job. That, that white thread over here. I don't know where I put it. You know what? 
I can just use a red. It's no big deal. I'm getting limited on the amount of thread that I have. <laughs> um, I recently found some yellow thread that was missing, so that's good news. <laughs> I use what I've got, you know what I mean? If I can't go off to the store right away and get more thread, then I just use what I have. And that's, that's what happens sometimes. So I'm just going to cut some thread out so that I can sew on... Ah! So that I can knock this phone over now. <laughs> so that I can sew on the parka. And I'm just going to use the same fabric that I did on this one. It's a sweater fabric. So I'm going to give this one a hat and a parka as well. So let me find the fabric that I need. Oh, here it is. It's on the chair. <laughs> this is just this fabric. And all it is is from an old sweater that I had and it got really raggedy. And moths got to it and ate it a little bit because it's got a little bit of um, it's got a little bit of wool in it. So be mindful of that. Those uh, moths they love they love wool. I heard the one thing that you can do to keep moths away from your um, <clears throat> to keep them away from your sweaters, anything that you have that's precious that's wool, you can put cedar chips uh, along with them. You put if you fold up your sweaters and they're wool, put them in your drawer, and you just put some cedar chips in there with them. You don't have to just throw them on top. You could put them in like a mesh bag. We had some cedar chips, but uh, we need to get more. So yeah, that's another way of keep keeping moss from eating your um, your wool fabrics. So I like wool fabric. I like the texture of it. I like how much it stretches. Um, this has a little stretch to it too. It's half wool, not half. It's part wool, part cotton, and part polyester. So it's got a, it's a blend of different ones. So I'm just gonna like take these two ends and sew them together onto this little snow person, the snowman, snow woman, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> so I'm gonna put her, him, her over on this side, and thread my needle. So. Like I said before in the first part of this video, if you never learned how to thread a needle, um, it's pretty simple. And I have some videos showing how to do it. I'm doing it right now. It's easier to thread a needle when the needle, the eye of the needle is bigger. <laughs> but if the eye of the needle isn't that big, um, you can still thread it effectively. Um, they actually have um, these threaders that, you, that comes with a lot of sewing kits. Um, and it helps you to thread smaller needles, uh, needles with uh, smaller eyes in them. Um, now, when I do um, beading, like with glass beads, I have this project I've been working on forever, and I need to buy more glass beads to finish it. But it's a fairy purse, and the purse is about like this wide. I should you call it a handbag, <laughs> but. Um, it's all gonna be, I've been working on it for years and it's all gonna be glass beads completely for the most part, except for some watercolor painting that I did on the fairies. But the, uh, the outfits the fairies have on is uh, hand beaded with glass beads. So yeah, that's fun stuff. Um, I'll show you one of these days, I'll bring it out. And I wanna bring it out when I have the uh, glass beads. That's something I wanna invest in. I like the way glass beads makes um, a project look that gives a lot more magic to it because they're sparkly, they're bright, uh, iridescent. Those colors are just very magical to me. So yeah, so I'm gonna sew this on. It's kind of looking like a sweater. <laughs> but here it is right here. So it's pretty simple. You just sewing those two ends together around the snow person's body. I think this is one's gonna be. Um, I really don't know if it's going to be a snowman or a snow woman, which <laughs> we'll just wait and see. So. Like I say in all of my, um, my art shows that I'm trying to convince people that they can create to help heal themselves. There's been a lot of people who suffered from so many traumas and, um, they just feel like they don't know what to do, how to heal themselves. They may have gone through counseling and it didn't work for them talking to somebody about it, um, about whatever traumatic experience they've been through. But a lot of people have found a lot of healing through creating art. 
which I have, you know, um, I've gone through a lot of traumatic experiences in my life in the past. And sometimes those experiences can linger and can remind you uh, that you need extra healing. So it's perfect. Take that time out <clears throat> to truly heal yourself. So I'm sewing this around, around the neck area so it stays on there. And also so you can see a little bit of the chest, um, just a little bit of that, not completely like stuffed around the neck, the parka. A little bit of boom, room to breathe there. <laughs> so, oops. Yeah. There's a lot of people that seem to like when I do the embroidery um, videos. And embroidery is a very therapeutic form of art. For real. I notice that, I do notice that when I'm angry and I do embroidery, it helps, really helps to. Um, have my mind focused on something that's calming and then it brings down my blood pressure <laughs> and uh, it helps me to think about why I'm angry and understand why I'm getting angry over whatever it is I'm getting angry about. These emotions, once they're built up inside, they can become very toxic and poisonous. And if you don't find a way to express these feelings, they just build up until they s spill to overflowing. And then you're like, oh my God, what have I done? I didn't mean to punch a hole in that wall, which I've never done. I've never punched a hole in a wall. Um, I've watched people do that before because their rage just got the better of them. <clears throat> and that's not good. Instead, it's better to be creative. I have gotten angry at someone and yelled at them really loudly to the point where they were just shocked because they'd never seen me like that. I was mad because that person just like showed up at my house out of the blue, not saying, hey, I'd like to come over and come by. I was just really in a bad mood and bad way because I thought that person just didn't have respect for me. And just assume, just because I was a stay-at-home mom, that I would be there. You know, I was, yeah, I was at home when they came by, but I was having all those kind of feelings at the moment in my life where it felt like not too many people could relate to me and what I was going through. And the way that I could tell that is like that person, that person just showing up out of the blue without even saying, giving me a call and letting me know they're going to stop by. You know, and I hadn't seen that person in a long time. So I was just kind of getting tired of that. And I never really expressed how I felt to that person completely. So they didn't really know. So if someone doesn't know how you're feeling, sometimes people aren't sensitive enough, sensitive enough to catch on and figure things out like that. Sometimes they're not that perceptive. Some people are so, you know, caught up in their own thing that they can't really see what's going on right before them in front of their eyes. So this is how this is turning out so far. It's kind of looking more like a dress and a parka, <laughs> but we keep working with it. That's the thing with these. If they're not turning out the way you think they're going to turn out, just keep working on it. And then eventually you'll have something really cool. Just use your imagination. I think what I want to do is add a little more fabric on the bottom so the little round snowball on the bottom is not showing. So I'm going to do that. This is turning out really good. And um, I'm not sure how much energy I have in my camera, but if we start to run out of energy, um, you get the gist of how to make this doll. I just wanted to see how far I could go on, on this phone with this tutorial. I like the fact that with this phone, um, I'm able to record, maybe to record these, um, these tutorials. Cause for me, tutorials take longer than just a few minutes, like a 10 minute tutorial with the, with the artwork that I create, I need more time than that. And I'm lucky that this phone will record, um, I think almost an hour. I may record over an hour if it's fully charged 
I haven't tested that out yet, so we'll see. I thought it'd be cool to one day, I don't know when, uh, to do a live stream where I'm, um, where I'm doing this, where I'm doing a tutor art tutorial. If that's something you're interested in, you can leave it in the comment section below. Um, I know I haven't been the greatest at uh, keeping up with the comment section, so I'm trying the best I can. If I didn't get to you, I'm sorry, any of your comments in any of the videos. So if that's the case, you know, thank you for being patient with me. And you can always, um, you can always follow me on social media. Um, I'll leave links down below. I've got an Instagram. I've got um, a Twitter account. I'm on Facebook. I'm also, I also have an email address. So <laughs> I'll have all those links in the description below. So look, this is what that's gonna look with adding that extra on there. That's kind of gonna be cool. Some of these take longer than others because some don't really come together as fast. And that's just how it is with art. And I think that's how it's going to be with this one, really. This one's still in its beginning phases. It's got quite a ways to go. <laughs> Sometimes these can take uh, more than a day to create. Um, and that's okay. And art, I don't feel, should be rushed. You should take your time with art. And be thorough and detailed as much as you want to be, you know. Or you could just make things that are simple. It's up to you. Depends on what kind of art you like making. Okay, I gotta figure out where I put my needle. That's the... Uh-oh. Here I was telling you guys to make sure you don't lose your needle. Here, I found it. <laughs> I have this habit of... Uh, of not bringing the stick pins over. Because instead of using my sewing needle to keep this closed, I could use the stick pen, but... Let's put that sewing needle there so I don't lose it. Put this on the side. Okay, bring out the sewing needle again. And now I'm going to thread for some more thread here into the needle. So. Yeah, it's really relaxing uh, doing this kind of work, artwork. Just doing artwork in general. And the hard part is threading this needle with a little hole. The eye of the needle is so tiny. Sometimes if you have a hard time threading your needle and the hole is really tiny, the eye of the needle, make sure your thread, the end of your thread isn't frayed. Let's see, you can look at that. Is it frayed? I can't tell if it's frayed. Can you see it? Okay, anyway. It's frayed ever so slightly. So that can make a difference because if it's too fuzzy, it won't go straight into the needle like so, like that. So, yeah. You can do these uh, little dolls on a larger scale, like I've said before, and I have. Um, it just takes more time, more patience. It depends on how much patience you have, really. That's all it comes down to. And making sure that you're looking at what you're doing <laughs> when you're sewing so you don't prick your fingers all the time. <laughs> that does happen to me. So could use a thimble, but I just don't. Thimbles is like it's only good for your thumb because you're so big. <laughs> You can't put it on your other fingers, like your index finger, you know, middle finger, the ones, or the one finger, the fingers that are most uh, vulnerable to being punctured with a needle. <laughs> so, one of these days I want to experiment with doing needle felting. Um, those needles I heard are even more sharp, so you really have to be careful with those and not have those, you're putting that away right after you're done. So this is how this is looking so far. Looks like it has, <laughs> kind of looks like it has a winter hat on its body. That's funny. Because <laughs> it's so bulky. So what I might do for this poncho is I'll put some sort of maybe strings or um, maybe yarn of some sort on the, on the bottom of it to give it some sort of fringe. That's what I like on 
on the poncho. A lot of ponchos that'll have fringe on the bottoms of it. That looks kind of cool. So I'll probably do that extra to this um, snow witch doll, whatever. <laughs> Snowman, snow woman, shaman, witch doll. So yeah. It's coming along well. So now I've got this on there pretty good. Um, let's cut this thread here. Now I'm going to um, put the hat on there. So after I put the hat on, get that sewed on, um, I'll go back over this doll with um, the fine tooth count. <laughs> I'll go back over this doll with embroidery. And I think I might do the same kind of theme with the candy canes like I did on the other one. So, yeah. This right here, this fabric, I don't know if this is enough to make this doll a hat. What do you guys think? I think it might happen. It might, unless I got a little more, oh, I got a little more fabric here. And let's see. Maybe this is better because it's a thicker amount. That other part was just really thin. It's probably only enough to put a scarf on it. So. Yeah, you could add a little scarf on to these dolls if you wanted to. But the parka, I feel like it's enough. So let me see how this will work. I'm going to try to fit this around his head here. Kind of mold it on there. Let's see what we can do. Get creative. Let's see. I want to... Oh, that's not going to work. Maybe I should use the thin part first. I can fold it over first to make a hat for it. What we'll do is like that. See, I'm just folding it over into a rectangular uh, kind of shape. Just put it in between my legs there. And then, yeah, I'm going to have to sew it like that on there. Oh, that'll work. <laughs> you get to hear me brainstorming when I work. Usually I don't work with a bunch of people hanging out, <laughs> watching me, so it's different. It's different when you're sitting down and actually working on it. You don't have like a lot of, you don't have people around, you're just creating. It's a different experience. That's what was so uh, different about um, taking art classes and creating art within the that structure and as opposed to just doing and creating art on my own. I learned the basics through taking some art classes in high school, my junior and senior year. And then when I went to community college, I took some basic art classes and beginner art, I mean advanced, beginner art classes and advanced art classes. <laughs> and I learned the basics once again when I took those classes in community college. Um, but what I learned the most is that you're gonna learn more from hands-on experience, from just creating the art yourself. Um, the classroom is can be okay to learn the basics, but there's been a lot of artists that are self-taught that don't, don't feel as though they require that instruction. So I think you never stop learning, especially with art. It depends on how far you want to take your art, um, how adventurous you want to be with it. Some people get satisfied with just being doing one type of art, and that's fine. Some people like to do all kinds of art and mix the mediums, and that's me, I like to mix the mediums. So, how's that look so far? She's looking kinda cute. <laughs> cute little shaman snowman, woman. <laughs> but I'm gonna put some on the back here so it doesn't look just lumpy and just off place try to like give it like a lining or something for the hat so yeah I can't emphasize this enough you know kids love this kind of if you wanted to do this with your kids you they would love this love to do this because it's something to give them to do um, that's creative and they can express themselves however they want to okay I'm gonna need more thread on this <laughs> It's one of those things that I could see um, parents and children used to do uh, in indigenous times, indigenous times, <laughs> in ancient times, in indigenous cultures. 
um, they did a lot of artwork and the artwork wasn't just to impress the friends. It was to, uh, just some of, some of the artwork was to display, um, what their, um, lifestyle was like, how it was to live back in those times. The gods and goddesses, they appreciated and felt blessed, um, if they felt as though those gods and goddesses helped them throughout, you know, a harsh winter or what have you, they would make, uh, dolls in honor of them. People still do that too, to this day. I think that's a really nice thing to do. Okay, I'm going to just sew this on the back here. Just going to try to do a kind of a rectangular shape to form a hat. Or at least form the hat a little bit more than it is formed, if I can. It's trial and error and experimentation. And to tell you a lot of what I do with these dolls or any art that I do, it's very much intuitive. So it's there's like no set system all the time of how I create any one thing. Uh, so you're just kind of going with the flow of what the doll speaks to me and says it wants. Not like an actual like audible voice. <laughs> but when I look at it, I get ideas like, okay, I need to do this to it. Okay, this needs this to it. So that's what I mean by that, how the doll speaks to me. A lot of times um, I uh, am lost for words as to what to name the doll after I'm finished with it. And I look at it and it's like, what is your name? Bloop, there it is, and then the name comes out. I hear it intuitively. Uh, and that's how I come up with the names of the dolls that I've created on my shop. So yeah, this is turning out pretty cool. Yeah. It's a rainy day, otherwise I would have been outside with this, uh, or if I had a waterproof camera. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be too much of a problem. Never had a waterproof camera. If anybody ever has had one and has experience with one, please let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> be interesting to find out, you know. I'm looking, I'm wanting to get a new camera. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it though, but I do want to get one. So if you guys have, I don't want to spend tons and tons of money. Like, I don't want to get, like, a $600 or more camera. I just don't have those kind of funds. It would be nice, though, but I don't have that kind of money to do that right at this moment in my life. So, something affordable yet good quality, you know? Because with the using the cell phone to do these videos... It's a little more trickier because I've got to time things right and make sure it's charged enough so that I could do something like this. So, let's see how this is turning out. I love you guys see this. Let's cut some of the thread off of here. There. And there. So, yeah. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to come in with the same kind of design work embroidery that I did on this doll with the um, the candy canes and the hat in the same candy cane striped red and white um, design on it. So yeah, I'm liking how this is looking and I'm liking how this is looking. Look at this one. This one's more of a mono color because it's just uh, using red on the face. Um, I may add some other things on it, and I do want to invest in some more black thread, but simple is good too a lot of times if you want to keep things simple, simple and sweet with these. Um, like I said, you could turn them into ornaments. They can be even used as ornaments when you attach a keychain onto it. I mean, a keychain can be definitely used as an ornament is used on a tree, just hanging it on there. So, yeah. So yeah, it could be a keychain or an ornament. <laughs> it's versatile, has two 
two functions. Actually, three functions. <laughs> one function, keychain, one function, ornament, the other function to make you smile. <laughs> okay. So, you guys get the idea. We're getting up on the 40 or 30 minute mark on this video. I'm dearly enjoying doing this and showing you guys how fun it can be to create original pieces of artwork and to relieve stress from your life by creating a piece of artwork with your very own hands and your very own energy involved. I'm gonna add like a little ball on top of the hat. Make it really flat. Now it looks like a bobblehead. You know how you can beat that bobblehead look? Just sew the, um, the back of the head on tighter on the back and then it won't be bobbling around which I'm gonna do later on <laughs> but if you like the bobblehead effect you could keep it on there like that you know just as long as it's sewed on to the point where it won't come off easily so when I sew my dolls or my handbags or whatever it is that I sew I like to make the stitching very tight so that way it'll last a long time you won't get a cheap, cheap piece of uh, piece of artwork, you know, one to last, so, yeah. So I'm about done with this. I might just end this tutorial, because you get the idea of what I'm going to do with this afterwards. I'm going to, like, it's going to end up having the same kind of look, only a little bit different. Um, so yeah, you put your jump ring on there, your solo jump ring on, and then you attach, you attach this on there, which is your keychain and the way you attach it on there is the jump ring let me show you the jump ring has a little you can see that there's a little slit right there like a cut on it you open that up you can use pliers you can use your scissors you can use your hand your fingers because <laughs> it opens up pretty easily I'll show you with my fingers see that I opened it up a bit so you can see it more and now it's open and then what you do is you take the end. There's a bunch of jump strings to jump rings, not jump strings. <laughs> There's a bunch of jump rings to make this keychain. So basically what you do is just attach it to this jump ring that's on top of the hat because it's opened up. Now that it's attached on there, you want to close it up so that the keychain stays on there. And like I said, you can use pl you can use needle nose pliers. If you have them, I don't have them on me right now, so I'm just using my fingers, but that will, or you can use the scissors too to cl clamp it closed. But your best bet is needle nose pliers. That way you don't wreck your nails or your fingers. <laughs> this is closing pretty well though, so. But yeah, and then you end up with a keychain. See, cloth doll. This one's a, uh, Winter Solstice Edition. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty fun to do. Um, pretty fun to make. Um, they take a lot of time and attention. And they take you out of the busyness of your life. So yeah, there's a face there. And the hair on the back. Yeah. So that's how you make it. So yeah, thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm going to put this one up on my shop on my Etsy shop, which is www.darkmoondoll.etsy.com. So that's, this one will be posted up on my shop. I'm thinking I'll po post it up tomorrow. I'll do some listings tomorrow. And then I'm going to uh, work on this one as well. And uh, this one will be on my shop too. So I think I'll have more coming because uh, I'm really enjoying making them. They're very relaxing takes away a lot of stress of the day so yeah. yeah who knows maybe I'll make a whole family of them <laughs> but yeah I just wanted to emphasize creativity and doing things that are constructive instead of destructive um, when you're angry upset depressed especially during this time of the season with seasonal depression on the rise um, people need to find ways to 
express themselves in a creative way so that they don't do things that they really regret, you know what I mean? Just out of sheer emotion and, you know, anger and rage, you know, let's create a calm and peaceful world <laughs> with art. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for joining me today for today's show. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for the likes and shares. And thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below. And let me know if you're doing anything creative um, with recycled materials, with recycled fabrics. And um, we'll share what we do and help each other heal. And that's really important. Okay, guys. Uh, until next time. Brightest blessings to you all. I'm trying to hold these dolls. <laughs>